in order for my game to have comprehensive input validation, I want to make sure that the user can only type in the number from 1 to 6. It doesn't make any sense if they can enter any number, because the dice only rolls a number from 1 to 6. So if the user enters in a number above or below 1 through 6, then I want to just let them know. Let's start writing some pseudocode for the condition that I want. Let's start by talking about where I'm going to put this condition. So in my code right now, I have in this upper part uh, the thing that detects if the user has not put in a number, and I have this message. The other part is where they play the dice game. So one thing is that you might think that uh, the condition could go inside of this if condition, but that's not where I want to put my detection of a number outside of 1 to 6. So right now I have my message as uh, telling the user that they should input a number. Um, I can combine my two conditions together. I can change the text of this message. Usually good input validation has fine-grained feedback to the user. So if you're filling out a form and your address is wrong, it gives you feedback about that rather than if you typed your password in wrong. So I want a separate condition and a separate message to the user that says that they've typed in a number outside of the number of sides of the dice. So the place where that goes is once I've figured out that the input is a number. So it has to make it past this condition. It also doesn't make any sense for me to check to see if the number is, for example, larger than six if I don't already know that it's a number. So this condition goes right here. So I might say that if the, again, I want to put the negative example towards the top and the positive example towards the bottom. So first I want to detect that it's outside of one to six. And then if uh, it is inside of one to six, then I can leave the stuff at the bottom alone. So if the input is, greater than six or less than one. Now let's implement this condition. So I'm going to create an if block and the condition is if input is greater than six or input is less than one. And then what I want to have happen here is I want to change the message to the user. So and then just like the structure of this outer conditional, what I have here is similar. So um, if I've detected that the number is from one to six, then I wanna just run the game. So I'm gonna put my dice game code inside of an else block. And I'm gonna make one more change, which is just like these two other if else's. Um, I want to change the place where I put my win and lose message. In the original dice game, I created a variable whose default value was lose. And then if a condition became true, then I changed it to win. But now I'm creating my output value variable at the very top of my program. And there are a bunch of different cases where I could change the value. So putting it here as the default value of my dice game is no longer um, exactly appropriate. And I think it's better expressed as an else condition over here. So I'm gonna move my losing message over here. And let's try this out in the browser. So again, when I run my program, I wanna test all of the conditions. So if I type in something that's not a number, 
and if I type in a number that's larger than six, and if I type in a number that's smaller than one, and then if I type in an appropriate number. We implemented input validation using some new JavaScript syntax, but the logic behind the input validation is the same conditional logic as we already saw. During this course, we're not going to explicitly ask you to implement input validation in any of the other assignments. However, in a real world situation, input validation is a crucial part of creating a complete program that accepts uh, and gives feedback for the kinds of input that a user can give in a program.